When I don't have my two crutches, well, then it's really tough. Just walking is a struggle for John Worthington. He suffers from osteonecrosis, a painful bone disease that's slowly killing off his left hip. You, you don't sleep, you just... Uh... Now here's me getting into my own car. To deal with his condition, John got a marijuana prescription in 2003. He says pharmaceuticals were tearing his body apart. This is just in case I get stuck. A few grams of pot stay in his car at all times. One of those and one of those. So why does a daily marijuana user think legalizing pot for recreational use with Initiative 502 is a bad idea? Right now I'm under the influence. There's a DUI provision in I-502. It says drivers with five nanograms of THC, the active chemical in pot, in their bloodstream can be busted just like a drunk driver. That's not fair to me. John says he has that THC level in his blood all the time. But because he's a frequent user, he can handle it, and he's not a danger on the road. I believe that I-502 doesn't take that into consideration and removes my right to drive around, which is important for me. What's important to John McKay, I-502 co-sponsor and former U.S. attorney, is to pass a law that makes sense. I think most people, including me, don't want people who are impaired by marijuana to be out on the roads. McKay says the DUI provision in 502 uses the best available science in the name of public health and safety, what he says this initiative is all about. As the former chief federal prosecutor, I enforced our marijuana laws. McKay is not alone. Charles Mandigo, Seattle's former top FBI agent, and Kate Flaumer, another former U.S. attorney, say 502 provides an answer in the failed war on drugs. Yes, on 502. I'm willing to take the criticism of those who, who think that law enforcement people shouldn't speak like this. If 502 passes, people over age 21 could legally obtain marijuana from a state licensed store. You could buy an ounce of pot to smoke. Yes. 16 ounces of pot infused goods like cookies. Is this medicated? Yes. Or 72 ounces of pot infused liquids, all with a tax of 25%. The state estimates that tax could bring in $500 million a year, and nearly three quarters of that would go to health and treatment programs. Drug cartels are pocketing all the profits. McKay says I-502 takes money away from organized crime and clears up courts and jails clogged with minor marijuana cases. Let's go with an approach that says public health is better than incarceration. I don't believe that I-502 is the right road. At a recent forum on 502, Pat Slack of the Snohomish County Drug Task Force pointed out, with all the taxes the state plans to put on pot, a black market for marijuana could actually thrive. If you wind up charging $15 a gram for marijuana, then organized crime is going to be alive and well in the state of Washington because they're going to undercut that amount. It's a multi-million dollar industry in Washington state and we get no benefit. But supporters say any business that legal pot shops could take away from drug cartels would be a victory. As a pastor, I've seen so many lives destroyed because of drugs. Baptist minister Leslie David Braxton says he hates marijuana, but he supports 502 as a way to stop a war on drugs that targets people of color. In the city of Seattle, where African Americans make up less than 8% of the city population, they represented 59% of the people who were arrested for marijuana. It's an inflammatory debate in more ways than one. Even if we pass I-502, pot possession is still a federal crime, which means our decision at the ballot box is much more a start than a finish line when it comes to legalizing marijuana.